Greetings, everyone, on Facebook and YouTube. This is Joshua Seven Thunders, and this is Grow for Survivor. This is my second part to the How to Survive a Nuclear Armageddon. Um, I'm going to get right to the point here. Um, the Most High Creator would never let this planet totally be annihilated and destroyed. That's not going to happen. And he would also not let all the people of the earth be annihilated and destroyed. That's not going to happen either. Um, there are scriptures that promise that. And I firmly know that the universes have inhabited worlds that spread out into the infinite expanses. There's many, many inhabitants. And there's many inhabited worlds that's far more advanced with technology and higher um, levels of spirituality than this planet has. And right now they're hovering. Might sound crazy. They're watching because there's nuclear armaments on this planet. And everything is connected. All of us is connected. Everything in the world is connected to the one source, and everything affects everything else. So before nuclear bombs get set off to the level that it would destroy everything, the Creator would step in, our brothers and sisters from other planets would step in and intercede and stop that. But there are radioactive weapons being used right now. There are shell casings that have spent uranium that's been mixed up, amalgamated into the shell casings of bullets, missiles, and when they explode and go off, radioactive gas goes out. And you can get, they can, whoever's in that vicinity, I don't want to say you, I gotta watch my words. A person in that vicinity of a bullet going off, a bomb going off, a shell casing striking, can get radioactive poisoning and sickness. And it's a burning in your blood, in your cells, and it feels like you're on fire. Um, when men urinate, it feels like it's burning when it comes out. I've studied this. And so it may not be a big nuclear bomb with a mushroom cloud like most people imagine. It could be on um, smaller um, explosions that add up, that make a whole area radioactive. So there's ways to combat radioactive sickness in case of a nuclear Armageddon. And one of the best sources is iodine. It combats radioactive sickness. It's a naturally occurring element um, in the ocean, in certain plants on land. Um, it's in seaweed, edible seaweed. And one seaweed um, I had a list of seaweed. Um, one seaweed that has the most iodine is kombu, but I mainly eat nori. I make my own nori rolls, I toast nori. You can get these little packages that have toasted nori, and I eat it like a snack. Um, I wrap it with rice and vegetables and sometimes like fish like salmon or yellowtail. I eat fish occasionally. But iodine and all the trace of minerals that's found in seaweed, hajiki, um, um, dos, um, nori, um, what's another one? I think it's called wakumbi. I don't want to get this wrong. Yeah, wakami. But most of these you can use in soups. Um, I make miso soup and it has fermented soya bean paste. You can get red paste, tan paste, brown paste. And you can mix different vegetables, carrots, onions, garlic, miso, seaweed. Um, you can put fish in it, you can put lentils in it. Use your own imagination. But the more iodine-rich foods 
you eat in case you are wrong. Well, it's just a good idea now to start including that in your, your meals, your living, instead of diet, your living. And the number one way to survive a nuclear Armageddon, I touched on it last time, is having the Most High Creator on your side. Um, the Most High Creator leading you, guiding you, giving you the knowledge, the information, and mainly leading you to the places that's safe. Um, the first rule of self-defense is not be there. When you see trouble brewing, take your leave. Um, walk away, run away, catch a bus, get in the plane, get in your car, get on a boat, whatever you got to do to get to safe ground. So my guidance, I have a Holy Spirit, um, is to go to high elevation. And one of the best places to survive um, food shortages, warfare, um, all the problems that's culminating at the same time. Water levels rising, um, farms being hit by droughts, floods, fires, war, um, shipping embargoes, shipping routes cut off. I don't want to be doom and gloom. Because at the other side of this dark tunnel is the light. Um, earth got to go through cleansing. There's all kind of wickedness. There's all kind of tainted, contaminated, polluted oceans. And I'm going to read one scripture. Don't read. Don't run now. But it talks of the river of life. And it's in the prophet Ezekiel. I don't believe the whole Bible. Some of the Bible is the word of God inspired to come through channels like me. And some of it was words of men, their thoughts, their beliefs, and a lot of them were erroneous. Um, and some of them was put in there because they dug up a scroll here, found something in a vase, and they compiled them all in one book because they were talking about God or spiritual issues. But we have new scrolls sent down now. One of them is the Urantia book. And it clears up the erroneous passages in the Bible. But there's truth in the Bible, in the river of life. Um, I'll, I'll, I could read it, but I'm just going to point you to it. It's Ezekiel 47 through... Well, I don't want to make this long, so I'm going to explain it to my over understanding of it. An angel saw Ezekiel, I, I mean, showed Ezekiel in a vision, the temple of Christ Michael, descending after all these wars, after the wicked people who do not deserve to eat from the tree of life, they rejuvenate you. Older people will grow young again until they get to their prime. Younger people will just grow to prime and not grow older than that. People have infirmaries, blind, even missing limbs will rejuvenate and grow back when you drink from the river of life and eat from the fruits from the trees that grow on the side of the river of life. So this angel sold Ezekiel in a vision, the temple of Christ Michael coming down, Jesus coming from heaven, where he will dwell with us for a millennium, a thousand years. And many of you will live for a thousand years. There's some people there older than me in your 80s. If you make it to that time, this river of life is going to flow fast out of Christ's throne. It's going to go out of my gate, Benjamin's gate, the East Gate. As it goes, Ezekiel said, first as it came under the throne, it was only a few inches high, lower, lower than his ankles. As it got a thousand cubits, and this is a cubic from my elbow to the tip of my finger exactly. I'm six foot tall. I said that the last video was three feet from here to here, and my feet are 12 inches long. So I can measure the promised land. I can measure real estate. And that's what happens in here. They measure the promised land at the end of Ezekiel 47. And 
and they allotted to the 12 tribes of Israel in the future. But this is going to be on the sides of the river of life. And this is a painting of the river of life I'm working on. I'm still at the rough stages. And that's what I went to Western University for initially for five years. But that's the river of life. I want to put the temple of Christ way back there in the background, radiating light. That's where all the white light is going to come from. And this water is getting deeper and deeper and more torrent as it gets further from the throne. And this is the base painting. I'm going to put fruit trees and all that in it. But that's the base painting. It's in acrylic right now. I'm finishing oils and then I finish with an airbrush. And I do super realism, visionary paintings. And I like to paint scenes of paradise. But as the river gets further from the throne of Christ, it gets deeper. And everywhere the river goes, it heals. And when it reaches the ocean, the ocean will be healed. And all the tributaries will be healed. And when the trees sprout out, they will have fruits on them. And they will never run out of fruit. And they'll bear one fruit each month, 12 fruits during the year. 12 fruits on one tree. And now I've seen with grafting, I know how to graft. You can graft different fruits on one rootstock. You can have a big apple tree rootstock. You can graft pears, peaches, nectarines, cherries, all on one tree and you have different branches bearing different fruits. But because the river water is coming out of Christ's throne, the trees, when their roots go down into that groundwater, they're going to have life-promoting properties. They're going to make you live forever. They're going to cure all your maladies, all your elements, all your imperfections. And we will live for a thousand years. So forget about the gloom and doom. If you persevere, if you survive, you will live a thousand years with Christ, with him dwelling with you, with angels, with everybody around you perfect. Perfect body, perfect. not only that, it will make you more beautiful, more handsome. Your eyes will radiate. And the last hurdle we're going to have to go through after a thousand years, um, Satan, the devil, and Lucifer, and the demons will be let out of the bottomless pit, the abyss, where they'll be locked up for a thousand years. And we will grow without interference for a thousand years. The last hurdle with anybody that gets the greatness, that gets the perfection, is your ego. Humility is the last hurdle. When you've ascended all the levels, got skill, got knowledge, got wisdom, have done a lot of good deeds, it's the ego that brought down Lucifer, that caused Lucifer not to bow to Michael in heaven. So after the thousand years, they'll be let go to test you in your perfection. You won't have no excuses. Oh, I was weak, I was this, I was sick, I was this, that, and the other. No, you will be perfect. You'll be a little less than goddess-like or angelic. A little bit less than angels at that point. So they'll be let loose for a short time, and they're going to convince, just like they convinced a third of the angels in the heaven to follow them to be as gods like them, and not to obey Christ, Michael, and to be able to rule instead of bow. That's going to be the offer. You can rule. You can be gods. You can rule over your own territories. Um, that's the last temptation. And believe it or not, after some people have been through all of this, got made perfect again, ate from the trees of life, see all the beauty, all the nectars, all the fruits, all the delicious things. And everywhere that river goes, there will be many fish really good for eating because the fish will be living in the very water of Christ Michael coming out of his throne. There will be see many, many fish, and when it goes to the ocean, the ocean will be restored, and all the marine life will come back to life. All the coral reefs will get healthy again, and it will be more beautiful than it ever been in the history of this planet. People will be more beautiful, more handsome, more fit than they ever been in the history of this planet. The earth will be covered with flowers, with fruits, with waterfalls, 
with animals that can communicate with you telepathically, you'll be riding horses. You'll be communicating telepathically, almost like talking to your dog with wolves, with hawks. You have them on your shoulders. It's going to be a beautiful thousand years coming. But with any kind of good thing, you got to pay for it first. You got to prove yourself first. You got to prove yourself worthy first. To get all these things is going to take the fittest of the fittest to survive Armageddon. To survive, it's going to take more than seaweed. It's going to take more than bonkers. It's going to take more than prepper supplies, food, dry goods. This is, you need these. You need brown rice, beans, um, the best cooking oils, olive oil, coconut oil, um, flaxseed oil. Um, you get the picture. Oats, you know, whole grains. Store them up, vacuum seal them. There's many survival shows that show you how to do that. Um, food dehydrated, food storage, canning. But be in safe places over 400, preferably 700 feet. I like seven. Higher elevation, preferably in the tropics, where coconuts grow, where bamboo grows, where you got a 12 month a year growing season. You can start your food every planting moon in a water sign between the new moon and the full moon every month, like I did in Jamaica. I was there seven years. I stayed in a tent for seven years. I cooked over fire seven years. I tapped my own spring, ran my own lines, ran it through filter. I'm not bragging. God was preparing me to help guide you. Um, some people go camping for a week for this or that, but I camped out for seven years. When I get back to the States, I camp up north in the National Forest in Michigan. I've camped in Washington State, Oregon, Hawaii, um, Michigan, of course. When I travel out west, I camp at National Forest because I don't like hotels. Um, and I like nature. Um, it's a good excuse to get out of nature. So getting to high elevation where you can cultivate your own food, have your own water supply, and not be in a targeted area, if m nuclear missiles, long distance missiles start going off, they're going to target capitals, military bases, nuclear installations, nuclear power plants, um, power stations, um, the, the coast, and so, and cities over a million people. So be in cities less than 3,000 people, and if it's more than 3,000 people, be at least 20 miles out. The further mile out and more up in the hills, because this is Christ Jesus, this is Michael Yahshua's orders. When you see these nuclear bombs standing in the holy place, then flee to the hills. He said the hills. He didn't say the valleys. He didn't say the cities. He directly said the hills. Fallout, I mean it falls. Nuclear fallout falls low. All right? It's heavier. Um, volcanic ash falls low. Up in the higher elevations, you've got clearer air, thinner air. It doesn't flood. Water levels is rising. Polar ice caps is melting. Magnetism is pulling water up from underground. We're getting sinkholes. We're getting floods. We're getting people's cars washing down the street, buses washing down the street all over the earth. I don't want to get into doom and gloom, but when Christ said go to the hills, there are going to be survivors. That's what people got to know. It's always going to be survivors. It's always going to be this earth. This earth will wipe the people, does wipe the people out, threaten to destroy her. The earth will fight back with tornadoes, with hurricanes, with hailstones this big. No, in the Bible says hailstones 70 pounds is going to be coming down through people's roofs. And, um, they're getting bigger and bigger. It's, it's great group hell start. I just, I didn't heard baseball size, golf ball size. They're getting bigger and bigger. So these things are happening. All you got to do is look around. I mean, look on YouTube. Look at videos. Um, um, sign of the times. 
It's S O T T. Is a station to show you all of these things. I mean, it, it could be scary to some people, but the number one thing is you got to get right with God. I, we all got to get right with God. I ain't gonna act holier than thou or nothing. We all have to get right with God, get one with God, and then get one with each other. And I'm gonna end this video. Community is really important. Forming groups, I wanna call it tribes, because God is tribal. He had the 12 tribes of Israel. He had the 12 tribes of Ishmael, Arabia. These are two holy families of God on this planet. And they were to be constituted into a mighty nation, which they are today. The Ishmael, Arabic nation, is powerful. They're vast. There's millions of them now. They started with 70 individuals that fled to Mecca, or from Mecca to Medina. The Christians started with 70 individuals on Pentecostal AD 14 or something. Christ poured the Holy Spirit out of them and they talk in tongues. All the languages of the world to spread the gospel of Christ all over the known Galilean world. As far as they could walk, ride a camel, or a horse sideways on a donkey, they took the, the knowledge of one God, the Ten Commandments, Christ's three golden rules, and the promise of resurrection and power over death. And so that's what I'm about to tell you. That God gives you power over death. God is going to have as many people living today that will never die. And when you live for a thousand years and you don't succumb to the final temptation of your ego of pride, you can live down here in paradise that's beautiful as long as you want until you're ready to go to the first level of heaven. And then you just lay down on an altar with garland, with flowers, with the holy sacrament burning around you. People singing songs. And you'll simply astral travel because you'll be with one with your soul, one with God. And you'll be able to leave your body at will then and go with the two seraphim angels that come for you. And the way you travel is seraphic transport. You fuse with the bodies. This is in your answer book. You fuse with the two seraphims, one female, one male. They always travel in pairs, angels. And your soul fuses with their soul, and they move with you instantaneously through energy gear it's, that's all over the heavens. And they attach to this energy gear almost instantaneously, like a stargate. You're on the first level of heaven on the receiving sea of glass. And you go with a whole tribe, a whole class of ascending souls that arrive at the same time as you. And you are meant to be together. That's going to be your family. That's going to be your ascending family. And you're going to move through that first world that's half physical, half spiritual, called Marantia. And Christ has built a mansion for you. Exactly to your liking, your wishes. If you want a swimming pool, a basketball court, a tennis court, a koi pond, a greenhouse, a music studio, a video editing studio, that's what you'll have in your mansion. And it'll be set up exactly the perfect kitchen, seven sinks, counters and, 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 and storage everywhere, and you'll have gardens, the gardens in heaven. The first level have nectars that's absolutely delicious. They have tree vegetable protein that tastes like sausages, like hot dogs. You peel the leaves back and inside is a vegetable like a little sausage, but it's plant protein. You fry them, cook them, spice them up, but they grow on a plant. I'm telling you the truth. I want you to know this word too. And all the fruits, the nectars, the fish. Yeah, you eat fish in heaven, then I just tell you. Where the river of life go, on this earth, Christ was a fisherman. His favorite meal, just like my excellent Oscar Lester did out of my fishing buddy, um, was a fish sandwich and some wine. And that's what Christ liked. Some bread, some fish, and some wine. That was his last meal. When he resurrected three days later and came on the beach to his uh, uh, apostles, they didn't recognize him at first until he showed them his hands and his feet. 
because he had ascended. He was in his body of light. He was handsome. He was radiating. He didn't look like I like I don't look like I look here. I'm kind of rough. But in my body of light, which is in here, is an angel inside of me. It was an angel inside of a, a creator, a ruler of the angels who was inside of Christ. He's the sovereign ruler of all the angels in this universe. So for him to assume, here I am preaching again. I'm not a priest, I'm a warrior. But I'm the kind of warrior who will say a few words over, over my defeated foe before I send him to meet his maker. Like, may the Most High God deal more justly and mercifully than I just did with you. You know, something like that. Say a few scriptures like Samuel Jackson. But never mind that. Um, forming community back on surviving Armageddon. I want to. That's part of it, the river of life. That's your goal. You know, the pleasing of God, living with Christ for a thousand years. You can play music for Him, bring Him artwork, bring Him fruits, juices. He'll be eating with us. Now, ain't that something to look forward to? So don't fear what they are doing. God is all powerful. Christ is powerful. Christ is more powerful than all of them, more powerful than the guy over there in Russia, the guy in the Ukraine, the people in Germany, the people in the United States up in there. Um, we don't have to worry about them. What we should do is focus on forming tribes. And I'm ushering in humbly, tribes. Many of you know who I am. You need to start believing. It took me hard to believe it, but I'm believing I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm leading you to the promised land. And I'm going to do things as God was with Bob, who was Moses resurrected, who was Joseph resurrected. As, Bob, as God was with Bob, God said he's going to be with me. But I got to step up. And I got to do what I got to do, what I'm telling you. And I play music. I got songs. I just wrote a song in the bathtub. I write quite a few songs in the bathtub. I, mean, I take salt water baking soda baths, a cup of Epsom salt, and a box, a whole box of baking soda. It only costs a dollar to 25 at the dollar store. And it went up to 25. But it's a powerful cleanser. It pulls toxins out of your pores. Your pores is your biggest eliminate organ. And I take about three baths a week in a flower shop finish with a shower on the other days I take a shower. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And next thing, when you're camping, even in the winter, I do winter camping sometimes, in a bell style tent with a wood stove. And it shows you you can survive even in a cold winter snow all over the place in a tent. If your house get burned up, air earthquake flooded out, you need a backup, and I, I keep doing it. I put four season tents up on the screen. Wood stove, winter well is a really good wood stove for tent camping. They make some with a window and some with a hot water heater on the side of the wood water jacket. I got a wood stove in the corner, got a water jacket. I make double burner 55 gallon drum wood stoves. I have that in my basement, I don't have a furnace. This is a fix me up house I'm living in. Me and my brother bought it for seven grand, thirty-five hundred each. I had to repair a whole bunch of stuff, put ceilings in, this, that, and the other, plumbing, wiring. Instead of putting a furnace, I put a dermal burn, a wood stove. And so I cut firewood to heat my house. I have two uh, 56 volt and 80 volt um, battery operated chainsaws. I'll link them in the description and show them up on the screen. I have silky saws, hand saws. I have hatchets, but I don't lose them that much. And I baton with my survival knife or machete and make kindling by hitting another piece of wood on top of uh, wood just being, you know what I mean, batoning. But um, forming groups of up to 70 individuals at high elevation, preferably in the tropics, but their center of light properties, and that's what we're going to call them, centers of light, with tribes there. And I want you to form, the Most High wants you to form tribes. I got this from the angel Raphael, Archangel Raphael, in the star seed transmission. Of less than 70 individuals, 70 is a powerful mystic number, 
the more people in God's name, in Christ's name, that come together in oneness, the more angels you are assigned to your tribe, to your family, to your project, to your properties, to your promised land. So when you get three, you're excited an angel. When you get seven, you're excited more angels. Two. When you get twelve, you get say three angels. I'm not as sure of how it go, but that's you step up with more and more angels working to make your project, your community work, to guard over you, to give you ideas, to inspire you, to make things work in God's name. <clears throat> so you form families, tribes. Give your tribe a name, like the bow, um, broken uh, Bear Creek tribe, Sunny Valley tribe, um, the Ohm family tribe, the Love Israel tribe, um, the Lakota Horse tribe, you know what I mean, be, be creative, the Escanaba River tribe, the, the, the Manistee River tribe. Be creative, make banners, be known for something you produce like apple cider, um, Rocky Mountain Hooch tribe, <laughs> you know what I mean? Be creative, come together in God's name, in Christ's name. Fast, pray, purify, sanctify yourself, give up unclean foods, give up pork, butt, gut, and what? Read Leviticus after Leviticus 11. Don't read all that sacrifice and total does and all. Get you well confused, and Moses included that from Egypt. But God don't want you sacrificing and bleeding animals like that. I mean, when you eat kosher animals, you bleed them to make it kosher. Pray of them, bleed them. And then animals that split the hoof and chew the cud like a cow, like a goat, like a sheep. I've said this before, antelopes, deer. They're good and kosher to eat. And deer venison was the best meat I ever ate in my life. And if it get to, I can't get beans, rice, lentils, vegetarian food, and there's a deer out there, I'll definitely, you know, honorably, you know, um, respectfully take a deer down, skin it, process it, use everything of it, and start eating little pieces to I wean myself back to eating heavy foods if I have to. I'm not in the vegetarian club. That's not, I'm, I'm eating for health, sports, fitness, nutrition, whatever it takes. You know what I mean? To stay strong so I can serve, work, and possibly fight for you. And if the fighting ain't going our way, run with you. All right? So this is Seven Thunders. Form groups. Be agriculturally based. Have a greenhouse. I do ponds. Ponds is fun. I, I dig by hand. I use digging bars, tooth shovels, um, picks sometimes. But fish ponds, grow tilapia, jade perch, um, rainbow trout, brown trout up in the north, um, perch, um, sunfish. So have a fish pond, use the water to water your fruit trees, your berries, your flowers, your gardens, because it has the fish waste in it. I make a Baki trickle filter out of three totes. And the tote size goes with the size of the pond. Right now, I got a tote set about this big, like 17 gallon, and then I got 27 gallon. I have two filters on my pond in the backyard, and I built that pond for less than $500. Thrifty. I got landscape rocks, boulders off Craigslist, off the side of the road where the electric company put up a telephone post and dig out a whole bunch of rocks up in the country. I got an old Chevy truck. I used, uh, what do you call it? A sling, a boulder sling. I made out of pond liner with two handles. And you have two people and you roll a big boulder on, you pick it up and fling it in the back of your truck. I collected my own rocks, Craigslist, picked them up. I got billboard sign, 15 mil billboards. This is important for survival. These billboard signs is cheaper than Utah rubber pond liner and they work good, they're 15 millimeters. They're white on one side, black on the other, and they use them for billboard signs. But you can order them fresh before they print on them. You can also use old billboard signs to make a pond, or make a roof for a shed or a makeshift cabin. They're really waterproof and durable. But I line my ponds with that with the black facing up. 
it's like dark backgrounds. They look better. But I make a stream with volcanic rock and then a waterfall dropping in. I put a bog on one end, which is a shallow water area where you have um, water plants. I have taro roots in there, swamp marigold, um, watercress, you can eat it. Um, what's the arrowroot, pickerel weed, um, frogwort, um, water hyacinth. And it sucks the fish waste out so the nitrogens and nitrogen don't make algae green water. My water in my pond is crystal clear. I did battle with algae where you couldn't even see the fish for two years and I kept experimenting with my filters. And now I've got it crystal clear without using ultraviolet. But you raise fish, the fish waste feeds your plants. You raise chickens or quails, the bird waste feeds your compost pile. You always compost your, your animal manure first and then put the compost after it's broke down in your trees and gardens. And the fish filter has fish waste in it too. And I rinse that out into the compost pile, you know, and then put the filter pads back into my totes. Um, but being up in the hills, being in the tropics preferably, high elevation, Coconuts is one of the most useful plants on the planet. Green jelly coconut water is one of the best fluids for you. And it flushes you out. It has enzymes, it has vitamins, it has proteins in it. And the coconut has protein, it has meat, it has fuel, it has oil. And it has shelter. You can make shelter out of the branches. You can roof huts, you can weave it and make walls. So getting to the tropics, forming tribes, um, naming a tribe for unity, having a banner, being recognizable, which brings me to the next point. Every full moon, we're ushering in the trade barter system. The financial system is going down, and a lot of us is going to be locked out of the financial system if we don't take the mark of the beast to buy, sell, or trade. is in Revelation. You have to have the mark of the beast to buy, sell, or trade, or do banking. So getting to a self-sufficient survival property as soon as possible, a lot of people already have it. I've been working on the property in Jamaica for over 30 years. There's already over 49 coconuts bearing coconut. There's many different species, about 12 different kinds of mangoes grow on that property. We got big mangoes, actually big head mangoes, they call them in Jamaica. We have red mangoes, we have stringies, we have Greenwich, we have number 11. Um, they have different names um, in Jamaica. The agricultural mango. And we have papayas, really good for your digestion. And one of the best smoothies for you is green jelly coconut water, not the old water. The green jelly coconut water can have more than a liter or a quart in one quart, in one coconut. Um, is more watery, less oily. A lot of people already know that. You mix one papaya, and then this what? We got big papayas in Jamaica. And our papayas are delicious because they're organic. Um, and I use bamboo leaves. There's bamboo all over the property in Jamaica. And I'm looking for tribal members to work with me now. Um, you mix a papaya, a banana. We have heirloom bananas, honey bananas, and red bananas in Jamaica that have the little black seeds in a circle inside the banana. The, de the new ones, GMO, DC, the they are not as powerful and good for you as the ones with the little seeds. And the seeds form as an intestinal cleanser. Um, they put fiber and they just scrape off things off your colon and intestine. I ain't going to get too graphic. But that is really good eating a papaya, coconut water, a banana, a sprinkle of nutmeg in it and drink it. It gives you everything you need. If you have spirulina, it makes it even for noni juice. Noni grows wild. I threw trees. I was making noni wine in Jamaica. It, killed a, it, it cured a brother's AIDS and it cured my teacher's cancer and he was only giving me weeks to live. It was benign and it totally Killed it all the way out of the system, and the doctor wanted to know what. 
But for a minute, noni juice is delicious. I use half honey, half raw sugar. I put it in old JB and Appleton rum bottles I got from the bar and cleaned them out. I put them in my shed there for three months. It clarified and was absolutely delicious. And they have very low alcohol content and really, really healthy for you. So get it at a high elevation to tropics, Ecuador, um, Costa Rica, Jamaica, the hills of Ghana. There's property all over the earth. Stay away from low lying islands. And for me, that's the way to survive Armageddon. Have the right survival supply. People are like, why get this? And that? They are not going to blow up the whole world. It ain't going to happen. There are going to be pockets of survivors everywhere. And just like when we came out of Egypt, you don't have to strive for wealth and big mansions and houses and boats and planes and music studios and equipment. There are going to be millions, billions of dead bodies. I mean, it's the truth. And there are going to be birds that's going to pick the bodies clean. It's in the Bible. Birds of prey, carnival, carrion, they're going to pick the bones clean. And our job is going to be for five years. It's going to be a crew that marks flags where there's bones. And there's going to be another crew to come and bury them. And then we will set fire to the war implements, to the tanks. And we ain't going to need no matches. We ain't going to need no magnesium fire rods or none of that. We're going to call down fire from heaven. And it's going to hit these tanks these missiles, all of these bombs, these rocket launchers, and it's going to melt them right back down to the elements. God's people is about to become powerful. In the promised land, in, in the wilderness, manna dropped. Every day we walked for 40 years, manna from heaven dropped. It was like snowflakes. And when we gathered, it, it was like flour. And it tastes like honey. And it melted in your mouth. And you can form it into balls and make it into cakes and patties and fry it and put it on circle rings on, on wood poles over the fire and make donuts. They made it all kind of ways, but it was delicious. It tastes like honey and melted in your mouth like a cake or a bread. And it was, they said it was the bread of heaven, but actually it was the food from a habited world on the seventh level. This and this is on the bottom line. This is the first level of inhabiting the world. Well backwards, well spiritually ignorant, well violent, well cruel, very, very in the rough stage. And you got a second level, a third level, a fourth, just like heaven. The seventh level, you can't hardly tell them from angels. They don't die. They live forever until they choose to leave, like I told you, they on the altar and go. They can communicate over 50 miles away. On the planet where they drop the manor from, Thioba, um, some people find this hard to accept, but they are hermaphrodites. They're both male and female. And they look, they have chiseled features, but they have female features too. And they self-replicate. Um, they dropped their food to the Israelites. And it made us superhumanly strong. Man is about to drop to us in our camp again. All right? God willing. We're about to be given powers. But we're superhumanly strong. We're about to grow younger again. If you get one with God. And I want to fit into this right quick. This is another one of these long videos. But I think I'm telling you how to survive Armageddon nuclear bombs, anything that's coming, floods, earthquakes, hurricanes. Stay away from fault zones, the, the Madrid fault, the Hayward fault, the San Andreas fault. We can go on and on. Stay away from fault lines, stay away from coastlines, stay away from military bases, stay away from capitals, stay away from metropolises, cities with over a million people, and stay away from targets from a nuclear bomb. Now, I said the whole world ain't going to be destroyed. All the people ain't going to be destroyed. It's going to be a remnant. But it's going to be a lot of people destroyed. They're already being killed. I mean, really. There's already people flooded out. Already people burned out. Already people have died in hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes. And it's happening more and more and more every day. So, 
the wicked is getting darker and more wicked and more crazy and more crazy in their doings, doing stuff you could have never imagined a person do, just shooting people indiscriminately, don't even care, in theaters and schools, no reason for it. I'm not going to go into all of this. You know these are the last days if you want to God's people. So I'm going to tell you the last thing is to get the most oneness with God, to get the closest with God, to get God as close as with you, is to obtain a Holy Spirit. Don't call it the Holy Ghost. No, it's a spiritual thing, not a ghostly thing. The churches have a lot of words that lead people to give you really dark imagery. You got to know these words started, I'm not going to blame the religion, but the religion that has the most cathedrals, the most gaudy buildings with gold lace, the most emaciated, pitiful looking Christ on a, on a cross, all twisted up and skinny. And you know what church I'm talking about? The ones that molest little boys and do all of that. They the ones that started your traditions. And like I said, I ain't going to name what church, but you should know. And it's the seat and the throne of all false religion, what you call Christendom. Not true Christians, not true um, congregations. Um, all of that blood thing, all of that gloating in the worst position Michael, Jesus, was ever in, Yahshua was ever in, three names in heaven before he came here is Michael or Michael. His real name on earth was Joshua ben Joseph. And after about 400 years, people started calling him Jesus. He was never called Jesus as long as he walked the earth. But focusing on him 200 years in the lowest condition, in the lowest position he ever was in, is almost, it's, yeah, it's disrespectful. He is ruling on the throne in the heavens now over a whole universe. Let's picture him like that. He's coming back as a lion to conquer. How many churches say, oh, Christ is coming back as a lion to conquer now in the last days. He came as a lamb to be slaughtered. And in the end, no, he came as a lamb and got slaughtered. Not to get slaughtered. He got slaughtered. He came peaceful as a lamb the first time. And got slaughtered. He ain't coming back as no lamb. He's coming back as a conquering lion, king of kings of the tribe of Judah. And that's what tribe he come from. He was born August 21st. What they call Leo is the lion, the tribe of Judah. So last day I and King David was born July 23rd. Same. The tribe of Judah, the conquering lion, the lion, Leo. Christ is a lion. He's a king. He's the king of kings. And he's coming back with a sword this time. With a bow. Shooting lightning bolt arrows everywhere. With myriads of angels, warriors behind him. That's how he's coming down here. Before he set up his throne, before the temple descends, he's going to get rid of all of the bumble clocks, all the people that's, that's destroying this earth, raping people, robbing people, cheating people, enslaving people. They have got to go. They're about to get rubbed off the face of the earth in this nuclear arm again. Let them fall on their own bombs, on their own swords, as they said in the old days. Let the enemy fall on their swords. All we got to do is get out the way. So I'm telling you, this is Joshua telling you, we got to get out the way. We got to exit us. We got to get the high elevation. And we got to have strength in numbers. It's unity. It's strength in numbers. And you assign more angels, guardians, to protect you, to inspire you, to make you do the right decisions so you become thriving in the wilderness. And like I said, when they are gone, you're going to come back and you ain't going to have to buy houses. You're just going to have to clean them out. You ain't going to have to buy music equipment. You're just going to have to go and pick out what you want because it's going to be shop owners, mansion owners, boat owners, twin Cessna owners that are going to be dead out. There ain't going to be nobody for these properties. There ain't going to be nobody for these mansions. So don't be striving and thinking, oh, you got to get everything right now. I got to get this house. I got to get this car. I got to do this. No. You need to get the, excuse me, you need to get out of Dodge. I do too. I got property up in the hills. We do. I'm just a caretaker. The God put it into my 
um, oversee my, my caretaking and to get it prepared and open it up for the right people at the right time that's going to cross paths with me and we're going to form our tribe, we're going to form our banners and every full moon we're going to meet other tribes in valleys, on ball fields and we're going to have a full moon harvest festival or festival of the booths because God said you should have a festival of a booth every year to time and death. That's one holiday he said you should have. Festival of the Booth to commemorate when we came out of Egypt and we lived in temporary shelters for 40 years. You have a festival of the Booths, you live in tents, little makeshift shelters, domes, little huts, you know what I'm saying? Tent hammocks. And you come together, you bring your goods, you bring your fruits, you bring your, your vegetables, your oils, your tonics. Some people might be doing eyelashes, doing hair, some doing paintings. You get the idea, some people got their clothing, tools that they want to trade. Money gonna be dead in the future, so we gonna direct to the change and change before the change. Because when you did that, you prosper. When you do things like chess, four moves, five moves ahead, you win the game. So, our community is gonna produce products and services. And that's how you make your income, by providing a service. You could be massage, you could be doing hair. You know what I'm saying? You can be sharpening chainsaws and tools. It's all kind of building houses and trading it for sweet potatoes, coconuts, mangoes, papayas, tools. Move service. This person's a plumber, this person's a welder. You get the idea. That's how it was in the beginning and so shall it be in the end. So the river life is going to be here. Christ is going to be for a thousand years after this war. And it's going to take this war, the Illuminati know, it's going to take this war to get to paradise. It's going to take this war to get the people that are destroying the earth off the earth so we can restore it into a paradise covered with fruit trees, covered with cedars, redwoods, Douglas fir, woodlots, that's, 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 done conservatively, ecologically, wisely. You cut down one tree, you plant seven. That's how it go. And to trees is covering and producing oxygen and filtering the air and the river of life is going everywhere and spreading out by the power of God and Christ. He gonna want it to go all over the earth, to every ocean, to every lagoon, to every coral, because I'm a snorkeler. I snorkeled in Hawaii, it was absolutely beautiful. Big old brain coral, yellow, um, lavender, fan corals, turquoise, pink, pretty fish, all different colors. I stayed underwater till I got dehydrated. Serious thing, I was underwear at the snorkel, I forgot to drink water. I mean, I'm breathing through a tube. I used to get dehydrated because I stayed down so long. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, Hawaii is beautiful. I lived there for about seven years. It, I didn't see the true beauty until I did my, my flop dive off up into the ocean with a mask on. You know what I mean? And look, I'm like, oh my God, it took my breath away. The beauty that the Creator and Christ created this planet under the power of the Most High. These are his planets he created. He's a sovereign ruler. He created these worlds before he came here as a baby. So people, and his name was Mike Biel. Just like Emmanuel, Gabriel, Raphael, his name was Michael in the heavens. It got word sound, power to it. They don't want you to speak in power. They don't want you to say things that we can do. It scares the little children. Nobody's interested in a religion where they teach suffering. They teach you gotta get crucified, basically. And they show, this is your king, this is your sovereign ruler. That's what happened to him. He up there messed up. He got nails in his hands and feet. He looked pitiful. His ribs is showing. He's crying. Why keep focusing on that? Now, if you want to survive, have faith that Christ is powerful now. He's a king now. And when he was in the earth, he was powerfully built. He was six foot tall and muscular. He was a stout man 
a perfect image of fitness and stoutness and muscularity. The sisters in Galilee loved him. Um, they don't have the right image of Christ. The description of Christ is he was a man with skin that was burnished copper color. Burnished copper color like a penny. Um, he had locks like lamb's wool. These are locks. Locks, not braids, locks. They grow naturally. And his eyes was deep set, beautiful, and burned like coals for intensity. That was the only description. Skin like burnished copper. He was a mixture of races. He came from an interracial marriage. Mary and Joseph weren't the same race. He represented a lot of races. He has skin my color. So you shouldn't have pictures of Christ. And if you have an image of Christ, I would say have a throne, have a silhouette, have rainbow, powerful light and colors radiating out so you can't see his face. That's what I want to usher in. Artists, I might paint one myself. Paint a throne in the clouds, in the heavens, in a temple with crystal walls, 12 walls, each wall is a cubic foot thick. Cubic foot thick, crystal light, jasper, amethyst, you know what I mean, quartz. That's how the temple is. It's 12 cubic foot thick. Each cubic is a different precious stone. Jade, amethyst, chrysolite. It's in the Bible. And his light radiates out from there. And there's 12 gates carved from one pearl from another planet where they got pearls that big where a whole tribe can walk through when they laser through the thing to make it a gate. Three pearls on each side, the east, the west, the south, is 1,500 cubits by 1,500 cubic square. Imagine that, with the light of Christ radiating out. And they'll need no candlelight. They'll need no street lights, because the light from Christ, mighty, all mighty, will be lighting up the tree, the flowers, you, and you're going to grow to perfection. You're going to be beautiful. You're going to be handsome. You're going to be superhumanly strong. Have that vision. And get through this. That's, that's the, keep your eyes on the prize and get through. That's the prize. Living a perfect life for a thousand years. Going fishing, going swimming, going mountain riding horses. Doing artworks, painting. Turning earth into a paradise. Going and planting trees, flowers, putting waterfalls in streams, rivers, I know how to do all of that. And make them circulate with the wind and the sun. So, this is Joshua 7 thunders. This is how to, to divide his nuclear arm again. And the last thing I keep forgetting, obtain a Holy Spirit. The first step of attaining the Holy Spirit to pray to God and offer yourself to him. Your whole soul, your whole mind, your whole body, Give it to God, give it to Christ. And say, I don't want to do my own will anymore. I'm a fool on my own. I'm an idiot on my own. I don't know it all on my own. But you know it all. You have all the wisdom. You have all the knowledge. You have all the power. You have all the understanding. You have all the patience to put up with us. You have the humility to keep getting insulted, offended, left. People turning their back on you after all. He got patience and humility, he got self-control to keep from wiping us off the face of the earth for what we have done. So giving yourself to God and then cleansing yourself through a fast, getting all the pork out of you, all the worms out of you, all the old undigested waste on your intestines is about 13 feet inside you got a colon and they got crust, black crust on the inside. When I fast, that black crust broke off and it was like tubes, like it came out of a pipe. And it was like black creosote from my wood stove. Black, crusty, broke off and it hurt. Sometimes it blocked me up. And I humbly, I had to use an enema to get that out. 
with lemon juice water. And it was a humbling thing, serious thing for a man to do that. And I'm a humble brother, but it flushed all of that out of me. And once there's all out of me, my stomach could absorb nutrients, shoot, like seven times better. I didn't have to eat so much. It went back to my muscles, into my thinking, into my bloodstream without being blocked by all that creosote like old undigested pork, cheese, all that kind of stuff that your body can't digest. Um, so after you cleanse yourself, purge yourself fast, I did it for 45 days. I'm not going to keep going into that. We just liquid, no solid whatsoever. Everything was out of me. When everything was out of me, God sent a spark of him, a clone of him, a part of him, a personality of him that fit me perfectly. And he got a personality for you, both male, female, male and female, I sure out of the father. I got males and females in me, and I'm still shooting live bullets, and I would like to have more children. But the male and female is decided by the man, not the woman. The woman has the home for the baby. The baby swims out of the man, and the baby that's strong enough to break into that house, that, that aid, his little room, her little room, and that's what the woman provides, a little room, a little cocoon, a little protective um, home for the baby, and the baby got to swim from the man up the, I'm going to take fallopian tube, go out into the uterus, and then find that aid and have the strength to penetrate it and go in and say, oh, I'm home. This is the life. Hi, mom. You know what I mean? That's how it goes. But it comes from the man. So them children came out of your husband. Hopefully it's your husband. Um, or your lifelong partner, at least. You know? And so females come out of God. And God is the father. So that's where I want to get straight. God is the father, but he got mothers in there, he got daughters in there, and he got sons in there, but God was first. So that's how it goes. So when you get a Holy Spirit, it's because you cleanse yourself after willing yourself to him. And then when you get a Holy Spirit, start talking from the inside. It start leading you from the inside. You could ask your God inside you. Or the goddess inside you. Because God has goddesses inside him. And your destiny as a daughter of God one day will be a goddess. After you go through the seven levels of heaven and get to the center universe of honor, there with the Most High and other sons and daughter, co-creators of God, you're sent out to the blackness on the edge of nothing. And you create your own universe, your own planet, your own stars, your own galaxies, your own rivers, your own people, your own, not just one race of people, not just one kind, Christ has different kind of humanoid people all over this universe, never now. Some are mermen and mermaid. They got gills and they live totally under the water. If you went there, you say, oh, ain't nobody here. You walk the land, don't see nothing but land animals. People are all underwater. Some of them live on cliffs and they got wings on something. And they live in caves and dwellings on the cliffs and they fly. There's all kind of creations. There's beings less than two feet, and there's beings over eight feet, over 12 feet on some of these planets. The smallest planet's got the biggest people, strange. And the biggest people, the biggest planet's got the littlest people to overcome the gravitational pull. I have the knowledge and the wisdom and the overstanding of the Most High Jehovah God flowing through me, and Christ Michael. That's why you should subscribe to my channel down below. Down below right is free. And I'm going to keep with my survival channel. This started as a grow channel. I grow our holy sacrament. Moses is burning bush, the spiritual aid that God created. Cannabis, marijuana, whatever you're going to ganja. And ganja growing allowed us, because of the value of it, to tap into technology that people growing corn and lettuce and stuff could never afford. LED lights, high intensity lights, um, CO2 dispensers, generators, drip systems, deep water culture, 
all these things are going to be triple down technology are already to grow the best food this planet ever had. So Herb is a teacher it taught me how to grow everything. Trees, fruits, berries, roots, all of that. And it teaches you quick and it had an incentive to pay for the equipment, the electricity, the green, whatever it had to take. And now we're going to be growing food with that. Marijuana growers are the best growers in the world. Definitely. Now look at the YouTube videos on them. And look at their installations. Look at the dispensary greenhouses. There's no full greenhouse that equals the technology of the marijuana greenhouses that just sprouted up all over this nation once we legalized it. And those are going to start converting to growing greens, beans, tomatoes, tilapia and trout and perch, food when food becomes the most needed commodity over ganja, and that's about to flip. Right now it already flipped with me. I don't have no ganja growing right now. I'm still, has my fall crop. I had plants over 10 feet tall. I grew them organic. I had stalks this big. I didn't need trellises. So I got plenty of herb. And I make hash so I can make brownies and cookies, almond cookies off of it. Put it in coconut oil, put it in my tea. And it keeps me peaceful, keeps me inspired, and it can give you, if you got the right license, it can give you the money to get the lithium ion phosphate power stations, uh, the lumber, the tools that we need to build up these tribal communities. So this is Seven Thunders, that's the way that I direct you to survive this nuclear Armageddon. Get with God, get the Holy Spirit, get with the tribe, get to high elevation, form communities up to 70 people, swarm with the, like the bees, start a sister community on other property, and use the resources and people from the first community to support the seven till they get to 70, stay at 70, move to a next one. That makes sense. That's from God, so it definitely makes sense. And the first rule is don't be. Why would they waste a nuclear bomb on a group of people growing food way out in the boondocks? It ain't gonna happen. It's properties where they don't even know it's there. It was stuff going on in Jamaica, I'm in this right now, when there was the Trivoli Gardens like little war going on with Dutch Toke and they wasn't giving up Dutch Coke and the people were shooting it out from the roofs and all of that. I was way on the other side of the island up in the hills. My people was concerned about me because, are you in all of that fighting and war and this? I mean, there's birds tweeting around, hummingbirds, you know, I'm sitting back in my shorts, doo doo, you know, reading books, gardening. We didn't know nothing was going on. If we didn't read the newspaper, if we didn't listen to the Ivory FM or get the Gleaner on the radio, I didn't have a TV. It didn't affect me at all. When it was all said and done, I didn't even know what went on. That's how it's going to be with us if we get to the right place. When it's all over, we ain't even going to have to, we won't even know it's over to messengers come and say, man, the war is over, everybody dead, dead bodies everywhere. Birds is picking people, dogs is eating. I want to get gruesome. But that's how it's going to be. It's prophesied. I mean, read Revelations, read Ezekiel, read Jeremiah, read Isaiah, read the prophets, read your rancher book. Your rancher book don't really go too detail about the end of the world. They kind of do, but they kind of say it's not written in stone, which is the truth. We still have decisions to make. Um, the guy over there in Russia still got, the guy over there in Ukraine, the guy here in the United States, the guys over in Germany, you know, Switzerland, they got decisions to make. And if they come together and they put down their arms and they put up shovels and gardening rakes, you know what I'm saying, cultivating tools, and get back on the tractor and off the tank, and start planting food, vegetables, apples, fruits, elderberry to kill, that, that helps cure um, sicknesses. I'm not gonna say the name, they might like to take me off. Ain't that crazy, you can't even say certain things like what's out there, killing people. Yeah, but cultivation, healing the earth, 
get right with God and vibrate loving frequency. So when the angels come, your aura will be radiating the right loving color. So they know, just like the pastor, we'll leave this, or this one alone. Take that one out over there. And that's how it goes. You got to radiate love. Get rid of all the hatred. Get all the rid of the hate, prejudice. There are beings coming from different planets that look far different from us. I mean, white, black, brown, yellow, in between. What difference? We are all human. And not only that, there are brothers and sisters too, even though they look different. There's good ones and there's bad ones, just like there's good ones and bad ones in every race and every religion. And this is the truth. Every group got good people, got bad people in it. So don't judge people by the group, by the color. Don't judge people at all. People are individuals. And people are on different levels of the elevation. But you can know when people are evolving and ascending and when people are going down. You gotta let go of the people going down so you don't get poured down too. And form groups and walk with the people going up to the hills. So this is seven times. It's just time to get to the hills. The time to get your hat. I got my hat. You know what I mean? Get your hat and get to the hills. This is seven times. This is growth for survival. Get you some seaweed. There's about ten different kinds, but some of them is kind of mushy and strange looking. And too big. I like nori and hijiki. I make miso soup, vegetable soup with hijiki, wakimbi, and dos. And the dos and, and uh, wakumbi, you have to soak first in water. And it gets some of the salt out of it. And then you just dry it out and then cook it in your soups. You can roast them. Um, mainly you put them in soup. So for the iodine and the trace minerals. And then green juices. Kale juice, spinach juice, char juice, kalalu juice in Jamaica. Um, juice it, mix it with water, mix it with carrot juice. Green chlorophyll combats radioactive sickness and rejuvenates your cells and can make you younger. Rejuvenating cells make you younger. When your cells die and they're replaced with more perfect cells. This is Seven Thunders, this is Growth for Survival, also known as Ivan Quinn. Um, subscribe to my channel. I'll link in the description below seaweed because a lot of people live in places they can't get it on Amazon. Any rancher book. I'll keep linking that. I, I really recommend you, you read your rancher book and read the Bible, especially the Psalms and the Prophets and Revelations to the end. Read Revelations to the end, you will get a blessing from that. So, the seven thunders, and when you get to where you're going, have your Bible, have your rancher book. You could be boring times and stuff. That's some survival supplies that one brother just told me the other day. He's going to be on the loan show. I met some really good people the other day um, at the healing, psychedelic healing sack on the Wolf of here in Detroit. But, he said he was almost going to get accepted on the loan show, and they asked him what 10 items we were going to bring. And the first two items was a Bible and a guitar. And they started laughing. They said they never heard nobody say they are going to be able to bring a Bible. But I thought about it, and he's right. A lot of times people type, tap out because of psychological problems. Um, missing their family, losing their mind almost. The Bible and the guitar could have maintained his mental health in solitude better and that could have made him go to the end. Um, so this is Seven Thunders, get your ranch book, get a good Bible and get to the hills and I hope to see you in the night.